Hello and welcome back my friends. Today we're going to take a look at some tier elements, not deck profile, but test hands. And I'm throwing in a few combos, a few tips that uh, yeah, some of you have been asking about. And honestly, there is a lot of deck profiles and test hands and all of that kind of content on YouTube. But it's like really some like neat tier interactions being like explained a bit. Didn't really find any type of video like that. So I hope I can at least show a bit. Uh, I'm probably missing some that I'm like not thinking uh, off the top of my head right now, but hey, let me show you some tier limits content and let's actually get right into it. Okay, my friends. So this is a bit of a weird video, right? I don't know how we are going to really start this. Tier tips and tricks. And I mean, I don't want to go about basic stuff like, oh, what do I do? Normal summon Rhino Heart and then I send Halfness. And then, oh, Kid Colos is still banned. How? Well, uh, I guess we're sending a mill too. Like, I don't think that's the level of this video that we want to get into. So uh, yeah, I thought about a few different things with Grief, for example, which uh, as far as I know, as far as I see, people are, I aren't sure about this card. Either people are playing zero, which is the vast majority, or people are playing only like one, I saw some people playing even too, so some people are in the know about this card being actually quite capable of doing stuff, other people aren't too happy about it, which I can understand, right? I'm also uh, not blown away by it, but um, yeah, it, it does a job. There are some combinations of cards that uh, yeah, can make Grief quite interesting, right? A mill 5 you could say to some extent, right? Uh, let's just go quickly over it. Let's go through the first example. Grief activating. We have Staliac in hand. So Grief activates. We summon the Rhino Heart. Rhino Heart goes, right? Because we have nothing else on board. So Rhino Heart goes. Grief goes. Rhino Heart effect triggers in graveyard, right? Then we summon him back and discard the Staliac. Rhino Heart effect. Send Tear Cash. That's a mill 2. And Staliac effect at the tier cache. Now we can banish the grief or whatever, right? To summon the tier cache and then mill three more. So that would be a mill five and having two bodies on board with grief and the Saliac. Another interesting combo is if you have grief and the Rhino Heart already in hand, then we're starting with the Rhino to pitch the cash, right? The normal terrible play that no one wants to do. The two. And then you activate the grief, summon the tear cash, sending the rhino. And then uh, in this case, we have nothing in hand, but you could activate the rhino effect then uh, to summon back. But in this case, we don't. But the tear cash effect on summon is going to mill three more. So with this combination, you could get rhino back if you have something. If you don't, you don't. Um, again, we're using two tier cash, so that's uh, again a bit iffy. But we have a tier cash on field, we milled five cards, we have a potential Rhino Heart on the field again, and uh, yeah, that's nice, and that's nice, I guess. And then the next line is the natural conclusion Grief and tier cash, activate Grief, special out a tier cash from deck, send it to Grave, that's a mill two, banish whatever, summon. Another tier cash from hand and mill three. So we milled five. Again, use the tier cash, this time without Rhino. But the thing is, what does Grief really do here for us? What's the cool thing about it? Uh, the thing about Grief is it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's obviously can synergize with our names, right? To fuse, since like these tier names can also be sent, right? Summoned and then sent by Grief. But the cool thing in this case here is, uh, since these two are like water, we can swap out between them. Uh, when we have one on board, we can use Grief to swap it out for another one, triggering both of their effects in the meantime. So that's a cool thing with Grief and Tearcash and uh, Kaleido. And again, with Saliac, uh, it becomes also quite fun. But I mean, Saliac makes many things in tier elements quite good and fun. Now a very sad scenario. Oh, we have Kaleido Heart. Hey, he's our bro. He's right up here. Say hello. Hello. Ooh. 
Uh, yeah, he says hello, but oh no, our opponent has somehow altered our Collider Heart. How could this happen? And now he's in the graveyard. Oh, we want to get him back. Maybe send a name and then fuse. Uh, oh, wait, actually we have read our cards, which again, many Yu-Gi-Oh players don't, but Kaleido Heart can't be used as fusion material or like whatever you want to do, right? The usual culprits are these two. Uh, but even if Kit, let's say, hello Kit, Kit cameo. Hello, bloop, bloop. Uh, yeah, even if Kit comes back, if our Kaleido Heart is in the graveyard, we are screwed. We can't recover him through normal means. And here again, Grief comes into play. Right now we special summon from our deck with Grief, but actually again, read the card. Again, something people don't do. It also can summon from the graveyard, meaning we can return our Kaleido Heart. Then obviously Grief Effect is going to send it, but because it was sent by uh, to Grave by Card Effect, he comes back naturally and does his thing. Actually, he sets up the fusion as well. Pretty good. So uh, yeah, grief for this reason, right? Something that uh, yeah, tier decks often can be quite annoyed about, right? If if your Kaleido Heart gets altered early, then you can be in quite the situation if the game drags out, which I mean, doesn't happen all too often anymore at this point right now in the game. But uh, yeah, if it ever comes back to that, grief is the way to recover your Rhino Heart very, very easily. And I guess we don't need to talk about the graveyard effect of grief. There is no hidden magic to it. If your Saliak is banished, then you mill the grief. I mean, that that's literally just the effect, which I guess the revive or the summon effects are also just the effect of grief. But again, since grief is a card that is not seeing all too much play, that many newer tier players have not bothered to look at, or older tier players just didn't care because in our perfect list of back then, uh, grief just was not necessary. Anyway, just a bit of grief uh, propaganda. I mean, we're griefing here all the time because, uh, yeah, Kit Kalos is still banned. Now, before we get into uh, a bit of a more convoluted combination or interaction that I wanted to share because it's I never see anyone using it, uh, we go over a standard one. We have Pearl Rhino on field. Pearl Rhino, right? And we have the Scream. We really want a Saliak, we really want a trap right now. And the cool thing is, Pearl or Rhino does not only pop your enemy's cards or your own monsters, right? Very often we pop our own Kaleido to do shenanigans, right? You know about Pearl or Rhino, Kaleido and Saliak, the holy tier trinity, right? Due to the fact that they can all trigger each other's effects quite nicely. We can obviously with Pearl or Rhino pop our opponent's uh, floodgate cards. But we can also pop our own Scream to search whatever trap we want. And sure, the Scream is really nice to have, right? A mill three in our opponent's turn. If we have thinned our deck, these three mills could be three bangers. Uh, and also the attack decrease, right? Uh, against cards like Apalooza or something. Uh, yeah, that's just one negate gone with that. Uh, so it's not a bad card in our opponent's turn whatsoever. That's not what we are saying. We all know that it's nice. Um, but in comparison to having uh, like either of these traps, obviously scream, we scream you out of here. And uh, yeah, Paul Rhino popping your own scream to search uh, is pretty nice. Okay, so the next one is a bit convoluted. I don't know, man. It, it needs a bit of setup, but it's not impossible and it never, never comes up. And there are also layers to it. I'm now going to show you, I think, the best case scenario. Um, which, what, does it, what, what are the requirements? What do you need to pull off a three fusion guaranteed combo uh, with tier elements in your opponent's turn? So you did all your stuff, probably got uh, negated here or there. Uh, that's why you don't have a big board or just a bit, right? The cool thing is IP Masquerina. Obviously, if we do something in our opponent's turn, this girl is usually uh, yeah, not too far away. Then the cross sheep, which many people have been cutting from their lists. Makes sense if you play Fiendsmith, if you have that money, if you want to throw that money away till Konami bans your cards anyway, right? She, they are going to ban Beatrice, so whatever. And then we have one random monster, which obviously is there for the IP. And that's the field, right? Cross sheep, IP, and some fodder. Not too hard to pull off, I, I dare so say. And then we have a graveyard that is loaded. Um, the better the fusion material, or yeah, let's call it fusion material you have, uh, yeah, the better the end board is going to be. We can have uh, like special ones like the Beast King or like uh, the Beast, 
Wraith, the Shadow Beast. It would be pretty good if you have the Nessie, otherwise, right, you're going to be in some trouble. Uh, again, it's it's the age-old question with elements right now, how do you get a fucking Aqua into rotation? And then the thing that is rather required is the Rhino Heart. So let me just stop the yapping and let me just show you uh, like one iteration here. Again, one of the best to do this kind of play. So again, our opponent maybe does something and we want to really punch him in the face. So we're going to use the IP Mask Rainer's effect to quick link into the Sprite Sprint. One link summon. The Sprite Sprint is going to send away the cute little Merlin. Now Merli's effect is going to activate and Merli and in this case again we're going to go off a best case scenario Merli and our setup Beast King of the Swamp is going to make the lovely mm -mm -mm, Lulu and uh, yeah that's already we have used once that's Lulu on the field very nice and uh, yeah now Cross Sheep's effect activates because the fusion was summoned and again Cross Sheep's effect many don't know maybe uh, it can trigger in your opponent's turn and uh, yeah, let's revive this Rhino Heart again that we've prepared uh, beforehand in our graveyard. And Rhino Heart's effect obviously can also trigger, and uh, it doesn't matter, Havnus or Sharon, uh, depending on what you fancy. Again, I would always say Havnus just to be on the safer side. And then, yeah, Havnus, the Rhino Heart, and the Aqua. Again, if you don't have the fusion material, you will have to find other ways. Again, we're going here off the best case scenario. And uh, since Cross Sheep brought back the Rhino Heart, Bro is not getting banished. So uh, yeah, we just get a Rhino Heart back into our deck without any worries. Making the Kaleido Heart. And uh, now we need to take a short break. <gasps> our opponent does something. Again, we say, nope, stop. And use our lovely Lulu to negate the special summon. And use Lulu's effect to send the Kaleido, and then Kaleido comes back, Kaleido effect, does this thing, right, shuffling a bit, and then we're sending the Sharon, and in this case again, this is the best case, oh, we can, uh, well, for a more realistic setup, right, we could recycle the uh, Mascarena and get the Mud Dragon out, but I mean, we have literally four different elements on the field, water, dark, fire, and earth. Uh, yeah, Mud Dragon, that's not nothing, but you know, I mean, you know what I mean, right? Uh, so yeah, here in this case, we have prepared the beast. Again, we're going off a like insane best case scenario, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. And that will be then uh, oh, this way. And that will be then the summon of Winda. So uh, now our opponent, we shuffle the card back. We denied a special summon. Uh, we looked at him pretty mean, we summoned beautiful cards in his turn and he's like now floodgated. Sure, again, we can have like all, all other cards, we can have like more interruptions in our graveyard with shufflers or whatever, but I think uh, at this point we have made our point clear. So now how and why does this work so well? We're abusing a few mechanics here that uh, especially opponents aren't going to be all too ready with. Let's start with, I mean the obvious one, IP, they're going to know that you're going to link summon. They're going to expect uh, an SP and again, if your graveyard is not as sexy as mine was in this example, right? Um, IP into SP or IP into Apo, they're still good plays, they're still worthwhile. And again, this play kind of assumes that you got interrupted um, since we have all of these fusions still in our extra deck. But regardless, let's not be uh, hung up on some like details or some nonsense like that. Let's get on with it. So IP, obviously, that's a pretty red flag for your opponent. They know that something is going to come. But we're going to abuse the fact that Sprite Sprint being made in our opponent's turn. Is that something they anticipate? Well, maybe not. So there's the first fusion that we get. And maybe they say, oh, maybe that's not so bad. Just one fusion. But they forgot that Cross Sheep works in our opponent's turn. While we managed to get our first fusion, the second one will follow very shortly. Because Sprint... Cross Sheep and Rhino Heart all work in our opponent's turn. Again, more experienced players are going to like look at me with a fucking dead face, like a fucking fish, bloop bloop, and are going to tell me, yeah, what the fuck is new about that? Uh, yeah, not much, but again, this is for more beginners or 
more intermediate players that want to learn a bit more about the deck and again some neat interactions i think uh some new or interesting effect chains that you can pull off and then right this boy triggers a fusion this boy triggers a fusion we have uh, in our deck three cards that trigger fusions from the deck right that are going to send tier names from the deck that is obviously the Kaleido and Rhino, right? That's going to send whatever tier name. And then that's the Sprite Sprint in our list, for example. And that's always going to send the Merrily. So chaining all three of these senders, right? These are like our three like small miniature tour, uh, Foolish Burials or Beatrice or whatever you want to view them as, right? These are our uh, monster senders, right? Again, maybe not the best name, and obviously these effects this uh, with the best uh, situation, right? So long as you have uh, just a dark, right? Then the sprite sprint sends the Merrily, right? If we go back to our previous example, we've made the sprint, then the sprint sends the Merrily, right? The Merrily fuses with any dark and we get the Mud Dragon. Mud Dragon is still a fusion, so cross ship triggers. And I mean, honestly, if you go for this here yeah, at this point you should have at least have something in the grave if it's any of these three to be honest a fusion substitute a shadol and aqua right because just going into ip sprint and all of that jumping through all of these loops just to go into a mud dragon and then i don't know rhino send halfness we have nothing in grave uh, send halfness and then halfness and the mud dragon is going to go into Draco Stapelia and then this is your end board in your opponent's turn obviously uh, then yeah you could just screw all of that and just go IP I don't know man SP that's the same amount like that's more interruptions than just the one Draco Stapelia so again a bit of thinking has to be done this combo is meant to set up our three boys uh, who are going to send our three names, right? That's the entire point of it. And sending the names is obviously only good if you have something in graveyard, any fusion material that's like kind of sexy uh, and not just like random darks or something. Anyway, let's go to the next one. Now this next one here is about our friends that we have uh, with us, right? The hand cleaners, uh, how I call them often. That is the dangers, for example, the Nessie, right? The effects are all the same, uh, not happy. And the Horus cards. Why do we play them with tier? I'm, I think I've talked about this very often, very, very often. Um, but some additional benefits again. These cards are in here for various reasons. First one, they are darks. We need darks to make Mud Dragon, to go into Toad or to do whatever else. Second, Nessie is an aqua which is omega important as i just showed you in this uh very long messy thing and the next thing these cards clean our hands from bricks like this shadow cards trivi karma shufflers malicious we're going to talk about malicious in a second uh let's just put them to the side so yeah hand cleaners obviously that's their name or at least my nickname for them so these hand cleaners, as I call them often, they are sending cards from the hand into the graveyard. But they differentiate between doing that. I think it's clear, but let's just mention it in one sentence. Messi actually sends as effect, these two send as cost. So back then, um, with the Ishizu Millers, these two would trigger them. This would also trigger them. Merly gets triggered like, I don't know, some activist uh, by Nessie, but not by our Horus cards. So the Nessies, the dangers can trigger tier names in hand if well, the effect will discard them. Whereas the Horus cards do not do the same thing. And again, it also doesn't matter at all for Malicious. Again, he just needs to be in the graveyard. It's not only the girls, by the way, it's obviously all these tier cards, right? All these tier cards, even the spells and traps, they all need to be sent to the grave by artifact. So the dangers, right? They do trigger that. Um, 
was it at the NAWCQ uh, just recently people actually cut the horrors cards out and I, I say maxed out on the dangers I think it was three Nessie and two Mothmans uh, yeah one of the tier bros did that and um, I mean it makes some sense right uh, the dangers obviously are also level sevens which in his list mattered not relevant for us today but them triggering your tier cards in hand is a quite nice addition to them also getting rid of bricks if they need to and also being the dark aquas that we are so desperately looking for so again why are we playing these cards in our deck cleaning our hands of bricks being good fusion material triggering our tier effects or setting up obviously for the big mill boy so and our last case is a very silly one but it's still so often when I watch like local replays or something like that because I'm out there watching Tillemans content, right? To learn something new here and there, picking up the strats. And uh, sadly, not everything stays in my brain, but uh, well, whatever. I see often people, right, having two maliciouses in graveyard and being like, now then, I can't activate my malicious because the other target is in my grave. Well, good sir. Let me introduce to shuffle and shuffle back into the deck. Should be a no-brainer, but please remember my friends, if you have two maliciouses, the she, malicious, whatever, in your graveyard and you don't have a target to use them, don't let them rob there. Just, I don't know, make a mud dragon and now you can use the malicious and do whatever you want. Obviously that's the better option than wasting a shuffler on that. But uh, yeah, the shufflers are obviously also an option. Don't waste your malicious in graveyard. Just, I mean, you don't have to use them all, obviously, shotgun. But... So for the last one, again, the malicious one, that, that was not a satisfying last one. I'm going to give you one more. Let's say we have tier cards in hand, for example, a name that we have not used this turn. Uh, we have used all the other names, but this name, we don't have used it. Early, again, one example. Or we have a second scream in hand, right? We have one on the field, we have activated it, um, right? Uh, we have one in hand. And then another option is we have, I don't know, Saliak in hand. Uh, and we want, I mean, we have already one. Sure, you could go for double Saliak, but you want to really get it into the graveyard to search a cache for the next turn or something, right? And we have cards in hand, tier, tier cards in hand that we want to get into the graveyard. But how do how do we do that? Sure, with some options, our lovely girl Sharon can help us with that. But in this case, like, how do we get rid of the spell and traps, for example? And uh, yeah, there is one boy that will help us with that. That is obviously the Kaleido Heart. So the Kaleido Heart, we just randomly have a access to him like that. And uh, we actually also triggered his effect. The cool thing is, this is one example. Uh, obviously, the key thing is, Remember, my friends, we can send Rhino Heart uh, as as a target, right? Rhino Heart is not just a normal summon or a revive from grave or something like that. We can actually send him into the graveyard, not only because we want to revive and then send something. No, 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 this is not the focus. The focus is to use his in graveyard effect to positively use cards in our hand, right? In this case, Kaleido Heart. Even better example, Kaleido Heart can't send the cards that we have in our hand. Kaleido Heart can only send out of the deck. So Kaleido Heart is going to send the Rhino, Rhino's effect triggers to summon, and we can discard whatever we want. We can discard the Saliak, activate Saliak effect, get the, get the cash, right? We can uh, send the Scream, add a Saliak from our deck, and then set it, and then we ball. Um, and again, the easiest option, or one, one option, uh, we have a Merle in hand, for example, that we didn't normal summon or whatever, and then we can send that, and then we can do what we want with that. Um, again, using the Rhino Heart, let's call it proactively, right? Usually uh, the graveyard effect is something that happens, like either with grief, obviously the combinations I showed you at the start, or it's something that happens, I'd say accidentally, right? This is, especially for newer players, you don't see people actively milling Rhino Heart or looking for a Rhino Heart mill, with either Kaleido Heart or uh, where do I have it? The Foolish Cards, like the Foolish Burial, for example, right? The targeted mill of Rhino Heart is something that happens very rarely. And again, it may not come up all the time, 
but this is what tips and tricks are for that you learn something new and you may forget it hopefully not but that in your near to next tier game when you're in a tough situation that you think oh actually there is a way we can think outside the box and use rhino heart in a different way right don't mill him for the revive or don't get access to, for rhino heart for the targeted mill but get access for rhino heart to discard our tier cards so my friends next thing is we're going to go into some test hands uh, just one or two again the video is already very long which i mean i'm just gif gifting you a long video but i know people don't really want to watch long videos and uh, they do bad on youtube and obviously if you look at the sub count that is not something that matters all too much but also it can be pretty tiring and uh, you have other stuff to do building your own tier limit cards and not watching me build tier cards i mean it's good that you do but let's also uh yeah you you need to mill on your own let's just give it a random shuffle careful with the sleeves and then let's just go 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 give it one more cut and take the top cards from here and let's go into a starting hand and uh, yeah we have done a lot of test hands for various tier brews but for like pure tier elements uh, we have maybe not done that yet uh so we have tier cash planet called by scream and another tier cash that's a fucking baller hand if i've ever seen one um yeah this little shiny bad boy just says no shifter for you or no maxi or whatever horrors they have in their hand so uh yeah i mean we can just immediately like go scream planet and if they want to uh let's say they ash planet and that's how we get rid of the call by right um it's keeping it a bit realistic uh not that we have any other like special use for it anyway the planet is absolutely shining i mean again it is a shiny qcr one but the glare is disastrous man i need to invest into proper lights or a studio or whatever not with my Yu-Gi-Oh card costs uh again what are we searching here we have some options but honestly it should be pretty clear with this hand it's not guaranteed place we mill if i'm not mistaken 11 cards though in the next couple of seconds so uh, I'm giving the deck here a good shuffle. Have to be a bit careful again with the sleeves. I have some more in reserve if actually something gets damaged, but uh, yeah, they are fucking expensive and pretty. I don't want to ruin them. Regardless, shove it a bit around. And uh, yeah, here we activate the Sharon effect. They don't have Ash, we already took care of that. Um, summon and discard. And uh, now, yeah, chains activate. We have the cash milling two. We have uh, Shaverin and Scream milling three. So we're milling a total of eight cards right now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And let's just see what the tier gods have blessed us with. I mean, uh, if we mill nothing out of eight, then I'm just kind of crying. That's going to be the end of the video. Uh, we already milled a third cash that doesn't activate a field spell doesn't do anything Nessie and the swamp so if we have the fusion material that we want with Saliex so that's going to search us our normal summon Rhino Heart Mstetti the dark right that we don't have to use the aqua we have a draw and the Trivikama so uh, what is like I mean that's just amazing we have two traps that do something immediately we have a, a draw we have three kind of four-ish really good uh, fusion material and we have a tier name for a tier cache if we didn't have one already uh yeah pretty good mills which i mean this deck is uh kind of centered around a bit more than others uh, or other lists uh, let's take a look at the effects that trigger immediately um yeah so chain link won this so it's the most protected again we assume no hand traps and we have called by everything anyway uh, and then we can chain uh, to become a quick effect and then lastly the draw which i'd argue is the least important one um so yeah did we shuffle yeah we did we draw a pearl rhino and that sucks um to become a vanishes let's put it here it's going to search us a saliac i think just very modestly uh yeah and then the saliac itself is going to add us the rhino heart and yeah then we give the deck a good shuffle because 
uh, even before we like normal summon Rhino Heart and then win the game, um, we could even mill some more if we're really greedy. By the way, I mean, we have now three cards here, four cards here, seven cards in rotation, a full fucking graveyard. Uh, yeah, we're balling, man. We're balling, tier limit's greatest, tier limit's strongest. And uh, yeah, here we can fish for some more hand traps or interruptions or whatever. We're going to go for the tier cache. Um, normally in these situations, right, you can banish one of the tier cash that you don't need. Uh, but we have grief in our deck, so we might mill the grief. So uh, yeah, we're going to banish the trap. We have the other one anyway in hand, so that's all right. And then yeah, on summon effect, mill three cards, Fenrir, nah. Merly, and another spell. So that's all right, right? We mill the tier name, and you know what that means. It's fusion time. Let, 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 let's go. Question, the big question is what the fuck do we fuse? Look at our fusion material. We have pristine. This is like Wang Yu, Wang Yu, like A5 uh, fucking fusion material. You have everything that you want. You have a dark, a shadow, fusion substitute, and a dark aqua with the Rhino Heart in hand. We could even use the uh, Beast King as a fusion substitute. But uh, yeah, I, I think we're actually going to do just that. Um, we're going to go into the Kaleido Heart place in a moment. But first, I mean, I have to take the opportunity by the hand and summon my most beloved, my Lulu. Lulu is going to grace the field and these two go at the bottom of the deck. We've already won the Hunger Games because we have the most beautiful card in the game on our field. Very nice, very nice. Hopefully we get some more shiny Tillamans cards actually in the upcoming tins. It's just, what is it now, like a month or so? starting of August right now so yeah it is what it is anyway now we have a cute option right we just shuffled something back we could like call the Rhino pop our own cards if we want to do something like that it is an option in this case again do we pop the own scream we already have Saliak and uh, yeah I mean we could get the meta noise that way but let's hold it off we could also again trigger the own Sharon but again we have the Rhino heart in hand so we are not in too desperate need of doing anything like that. Let's bring the Rhino Heart Boy down. Actually, by the way, uh, my obsession with Lulu is one thing and I always talk about how beautiful she is and so on and so on, but let's not be distracted by that. Uh, we also like prioritize summoning her early uh, because now we're nib proof. Sure, nibbing tier limits, uh, I mean, you can try. Uh, we have graveyard effects that trigger. So it's not that, but having the like anti-nib card is just, it's okay. Also, I mean, Phantasma is being played here and there, and I mean, we don't have links yet, but um, yeah, again, Lulu is just, I guess, a more uh, like foolproof way than uh, other fusions that we could have gone into at this point. Just going to say that in like on top of uh, like my typical ramblings. Anyway, we're bringing out our drippy boy, and he's going to um, yeah do some melon. Obviously, there's only one option here really that we can send. Coffiness effect. Yeah, at this point we have like some options. If it's like game, let's say two or three, and you're scared of board breakers. Um, one option could be to go into, like use the Mseti here now with the Huffness, uh, go into Mud Dragon, Overlay, Toad, right? That line of play, which uh, leaves us kind of hanging, right? We end with Toad. Shayron on board, Lulu on board. It's not that that's like terrible, right? We could even link this stuff off into like IP, Toad, Lulu, Shayron, Saliak, Scream, like and so on. That would be kind of cool, right? That's fine if you really want the Omni Negate. And uh, arguably right now with the format, that is something that you can value quite highly. But personally, I think, um, where's the happiness? Uh, personally, I, I kind of want to uh, like go on a bit more. And that would be, uh, yeah, to go into tier fusions. In this case, we're going into the Kaleido Heart. And now on the summon of Kaleido Heart, we have two options, which are both pretty good. I think the best one is uh, not going to pop the, the, the Shiren, right? We could pop Shiren and go into uh, a winner here right now and just leave it be like that. That could be pretty good. But honestly, um, 
We are tier players. We don't need to do that in our turn. Or rather, our turn. <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, Kaleido Heart is doing his usual shenanigans. Going to send, going to come back, triggering some effects. And again, we don't have tier names in the deck. Red Halfness and Merley have all been used. So we can send the Scream. Again, another reminder, my friends. We have not used the Rhino Heart effects. We could use the Rhino Heart to uh, get rid of the Saliac if we want to, but that's not what we are going to do. And another thing, we could also send the Grief to get that one back, but no, we're not doing anything too crazy. We're going to send a Scream. Scream is going to activate, and then we're going to get, where is it? The Meta Noise. And this is our end board. I guess like always, it doesn't look too scary, but I mean, you are tier players, you know what we have. And I mean, yeah, I mean, this is not the most sleeper build. This is just uh, even better than you think. Uh, we have Tekesh. Tekesh say hi. Hi. It doesn't do anything else. Um, yeah. We have Lulu, which special summon negate, and then send any tier card, right? We can use our traps and our scream as well, if we want to, uh, to the graveyard, right? Uh, this could trigger our Shaverin. This could trigger our Kaleido Heart. And this could also trigger Ellen Mill too. Just the options. Shaverin. Wave high. Uh, she's not doing anything on field, but we have one, two, three ways to easily pop her and send her to the graveyard to trigger a fusion. We also have the meta noise, which can also easily trigger a fusion, right? We have our names, like Hafnus, for example, in our deck to immediately send off either through well, the meta noise or through the Kaleido Heart, which we can easily trigger by the Lulu, by the Saliac, by the Pearl Rhino. We have three pops on field for tier cards. And we have two quite juicy targets, which will both result in fusions. And I mean, looking at our graveyard, I mean, the obvious choice is to well use the Shaverin first, either go directly into the window, or if we want to be greedy, we can go into the Mud Dragon first and then make the window later the turn. Your decision. I would probably go directly into the window if you ask me just to be on the safer side we still have one more summon left afterwards anyway yeah it is what it is so yeah we have the special summon negate a monster negate a book of moon a floodgate a shuffle a pop a mill three potential mill two we have a targeted fusion another fusion right uh, we can get all the protection here with the mud dragon very easily and we can get the window so through our opponent's turn, which is going to be a very short turn because they're going to look at this. We're going to summon Winder. We're going to look at them again. And then they're going to give us the handshake because there is no breaking this board unless you have like insane uh, board breakers, which I mean, they are cringe. And uh, yeah, they would obviously blow out this board because we didn't go for the Omni Negate. So again, that's what I mentioned earlier. If you're very scared of the like spell trap board breakers, um, then this end board can be decently played around with by your opponent. Uh, if you are confident and say he didn't draw it, if if you don't believe it, it doesn't exist, then this variation, right, without going into the smaller board, but with the Omni Negate, then this board is uh, just a ballin'. So let's go into just one more test hand. This one actually blew my mind. Uh, but why was it so good? So like one of the reasons uh, is obviously the fusion material that we milled. We milled a bunch of cards though, with our uh, yeah multiple tier cash right that's mill five scream mill three and that's another mill three so this mill 11 here obviously was quite impactful and let's not forget that we have the cold buy as well ready to defend our butts if the opponent comes after us and again the mill 11 is so good on this list because we've cut out or like we try to limit the random cards that don't do anything in grave, right? That's the balance of tier that I talked about uh, like for ages now. Uh, you have to limit the effectiveness on hand and in grave. Your hand cards need to facilitate plays, either just getting bodies onto the board or milling cards, right? Like our foolish cards, for example. And your graveyard cards obviously need to either be very, very good fusion material or set up further plays in the graveyard. Let's go into the next hand after I have shuffled some more. Okay, let's give it a couple more shuffles, I guess. And then we're going to cut the deck open. Take this, take that, and this and that. 
and the magic five cards are going to be revealed any moment now and uh, yeah our opponent now firmly under the sea bloop 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 what is that that's our opponent drowning in the tea element drip man the current was way too strong for him I yeah no firefighter no rescue ace no poplar or whatever man they can't stand a chance I yeah regardless our hand a shuffler hi a field spell great another trap a scream and hey this is just an amazing hand it's not the same as the one before but uh, I mean hey yeah, god damn man let's start with a Fenrir right it's obviously not as like foolproof as a tear cache but we're just going to add the tear cache anyway um, and well now while we're at it let's just activate the scream right away so we're not missing anything and uh, well Let's uh, maybe also activate the planet. And well, you know what we're searching. We're searching the best girl in the main deck. Man, Sharon is just so great. Hopefully we're getting like at least like ultra secret. I don't know how they're going to do it with the uh, secret and the QCRs for the tin. Are they going to share the same card pool? Or the secret rare is going to be like a different card pool from the QCRs, which I think it's quite possible. Um, but uh, yeah, whatever. Just tear drip, P but please, please, man. I just need more shiny tear cards. Regardless, uh, enough, uh, enough, uh, yeah, bag and Konami uh, for our products. We're going to summon our tear cash and we're obviously going to get rid of the shuffler already. Our opponents shaking in their boots. Oh god, what are we going to do now? We're going to mill your IRL, man. Uh, yeah, we're going to mill six cards here. On to. Did we look in our deck? Didn't I shuffle it just now? Let's give it another cut or something and uh, something like that. Uh, one, two, three, right for the first three, and then one, two, three for the second one. And let's see what do we have? A talent, so that's not too good. Scream, so that's a trap. A mill two, fusion material. Let's go. Another spell and another spell. Three spells milled. That is very fucking bad. Not counting the field spells, right? I think we only play five or six of these in the deck, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's just uh, yeah, pretty unlucky. Um, spells will not help us anymore. But uh, yeah, Nessie, that's going to be great later on. We have a mill two and we have a search. So scream chain link one, chain link two, tier cache. Um, let's just put it already here. Mill two, another tier cache and a grief. Uh, yeah, doesn't do anything. Could have been cool in the last turn. And then we're going to add this Saliak, yes. Saliak also, what is this? Like the best tier trap, I'd say. I'd say, honestly, right? I'm a meta noise defender, but Saliak is Saliak. Like, why is it a common? Hello, please. Rarity upgrades, people, people, please. Anyway, we've milled a bunch of cards. We have seven cards in hand on field again. And we have a bunch of cards in our graveyard. This time our mills weren't as good. We still have some good cards into our graveyard. That's all right, that's all right. I mean, just these two traps with this setup <laughs> when we already have two fusions, a pop, mill three, mill more, and all that kind of swag already unlocked. Uh, but let's mill some more cards. Cash effect. Uh, what are we banishing? Um, I guess just the grief. Let's just get rid of the grief. Let's not be uh, all too sad. Uh, we're going to summon, summon here. And then we're going to mill three. One, two, three. Uh, goddamn. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do with this. Militia's just opening up an entire board uh, of options for link plays, right? That's just two free bodies uh, that we have access to. And the big question is, are we going to activate the big man? So the problem here is, if we get rid of the Saliak, which obviously it would add that Rhino Heart, for example, that could be another like easy normal summon that's pretty pretty good for us. But then the problem is then we don't have the Saliak, the Pearl Rhino, and the Kaleido uh, trifecta. That's just not possible, which that's not optimal. The next thing is, I think Meta Noise like, is very underrated. Right now, the decks are not as prone to just normal summon Snake Eye Ash or normal summon the lotus or normal summon uh what's his name summoning beast um right because they have the follow-up of the fiend smurfs meta noise effect is not as good anymore 
So I think we're going to have to bite in the like apple and get rid of the meta noise to summon the rhino heart. And then meta noise effect is going to give us a tier cache for our opponent's turn. Then in a new chain, we have the rhino heart obviously sending something. And here at this point, we have the option to either go full ham and have fun with uh, the Kaleido heart, right? Rhino, Nessie and the tier name, right? And the, let's just get the halfness already out. Where is she? Uh, and the halfness, right? We're sending halfness anyway. The halfness is being sent. The question is, do we go into the Kaleido heart with, where's the Nessie? With the Nessie and just have fun and ball? Or are we going to use the Nessie and we're going to make Toad? Normally I would say, oh, we go into Toad uh, so that we are like board breaker free. That would be the way, but we make the decision to keep the Saliac. So I kind of feel obligated now uh, to do something else. Rhino Heart is going to get banished, Ripperino boy. <sighs> and we're going to, where is, where is he? We're going to summon out the Kaleido Heart. We right now have nothing really engraved that we want to uh, fuse away, right? We want to keep the malicious. Um, and as such, we are not going to use Kaleido Pearl Rhino stuff right now. Uh, instead, we're going to use the malicious. Um, why are we using the malicious right now? First of all, we were like in forced chains, right? A chain triggered another chain or on resolution a new chain would start. Um, so that's like one window. Otherwise, I would have loved to go for it uh, uh, earlier. And another uh, point is we weren't milling, right? Uh, you want to get the militias out of your graveyard slash deck before you mill so that you don't end up with the situation I mentioned earlier uh, where you have two militias in your graveyard and uh, yeah, well, uh, playing with your thumbs because you have no game, no place. Uh, some of the militias, obviously not in attack mode, but I just placed them there. And we're going to uh, take our random cards, the militias and the tier cache. Summoning the cross sheep. And then we're going to use militias again. That is, that is just so... That's just so free. That's just so free. Where is he? Yeah, would have been the top card of the deck. Yeah, so uh, you know. No, it goes. Give it a bit of a shuffle, doesn't really matter. And then that triggers cross ships effect because something was special summoned while it points to our Kaleido brother. And we only have one level four lower monster and that's the Keldo. Um, doesn't really matter, right? Even if they do something with their graveyard right now, Keldo can also trigger on field. That's great. Now let's clean up our board first. So we overlay into the Time Thief Redoer. Check the graveyard. Where's our fusion material? Sadly, it doesn't exist. And that's a big issue here right now. We milled so many spell cards and we have no ways to trigger uh, two fusions, right? And yeah, that's just uh, not too amazing. Honestly, let's just go uh, for this way first. Going to link these two away into Sprint. And then Sprint is going to send Merly Right? That's why we, um, if possible, we always send halfness first. Then it really depends on the setup, but usually Sharon. And then at last, we're going to send the Merrily because we want to have the option available to go into Sprint to send the Merrily manually, I'd say. And now because we linked away the uh, malicious we can shuffle him into the deck, which is not great because if we mill it, if we draw it, we want to shoot ourselves. But that's, uh, yeah, how do they say that's the way. And let's make some space. And that's the Mud Dragon here. This board doesn't look as impressive. I know, I know, but let's keep our horses. Uh, the biggest detriment of this uh, hand or this setup here right now is that our graveyard is empty our graveyard is so important for setup but what do we have one two three four five five spell cards uh an earth tier names that again kit is still banned so the tier caches in grave are completely worthless sadly um 
it is what it is. But regardless, we still have a tier cache in hand that's a mil 3 that immediately would trigger Scream, so that's a guaranteed mil 6, uh, just whatever. We have the holy trifecta of Kaleido, Saliek and Pearl Rhino to pop, negate and shuffle and to trigger the next fusion. Question is, what is our next fusion? Our graveyard is empty, uh, so whatever we send, it's... Yeah, I mean, uh, the easiest answer is going to be making uh, Draco's Tevelia on top of the Mud Dragon. Let's say they do something, they breathe, right? Uh, we have the option to sprint, detach uh, the Keldo, Keldo very important, or the random card that the Redoer stole, right? Because in standby phase Redoer effect, hopefully I don't have to explain that. Um, but if, if we don't do that, let's just go with what we have. Sprint, take the Keldo, bounce the card, or rather bounce the monster. That's our first interruption. One, two, three, four, five. Um, then we can, for example, shotgun the Redoer, banish, send for effect, effect Sharon, Mud Dragon and Sharon, make the Draco Stapelia. This puts the uh, Mud Dragon back into the extra deck and the Sharon obviously goes into the deck as always. Then we have a Monster Negate, so additional disruption. And then we can maybe look at the Keldo stuff. Maybe it comes from the mills, but if we trigger another fusion, um, any random name, toughness, um, then whatever it is, if it's the mills or if it's the Kaleido, and then Halfness goes into the grave. And if we assume we have already used the Draco Stapelia, then we can recycle further. Um, which obviously that's one of the sexy things that we can do with this deck. Um, Mud Dragon and Draco Stapelia can nearly infinitively uh, replace themselves if you like, do it correctly. So after we've used the Draco Stapelia, used to negate, if we get another fusion around, we get the protection, which with this field is. Uh, yeah, not so good. Dark, Earth, Fire, Water, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's what it is. And again, remember we have the Shuffler. So let's recap. We have the Redoer shenanigans. We have a Shuffler, let's, let's call it two interactions. With the Negate, with the Fenrir Banish, with the Bounce. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If everything happens as planned, we have at least eight interruptions. What can we learn from this test hand? Again, Rhino Heart in Grave can be quite interesting, right? It can set up a, a bunch of future endeavors. Sprite Sprint is an easy way to go into future place. And Link Place in general are being hard carried by the presence of, oh, we have the other one somewhere in tech. Uh, by malicious, right? If you see malicious, you know you can do pretty greedy and pretty easy to pull off link plays, right? Usually you have to worry about the timing of your, um, what are they called again, of your fusions in corresponds to cross sheep. But with malicious, you can just summon, 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 and then yeah, trigger cross sheep and then just feel great. Um, so yeah, that's malicious, offers easy links. And then the Lynx cross sheep can revive. Uh, Sprite Sprint obviously sends the Murley for fusions. But something else I highlighted here more again. Um, the recycling of Mud Dragon into Dragon's Tepelia, Dragon's Tepelia into Mud Dragon. And we're just going through like some details here and there to just really pick up every tier player here, even if you're maybe a bit of a beginner, which I am I'm very sorry. My I don't know what it is, ADHD or just tier finesse. Uh, yeah, this was probably a bit messy of an explanation, but uh, that's what the video is for, right? You can pause, replay, you can ask in the comments, and uh, yeah, then we can talk about all kinds of things tier related. So again, if you have some more questions or some some wishes, some suggestions for tier content, um, I can't guarantee everything, but uh, hey, just let me know, and then we maybe can do some beautiful tier plays together. Hope you like that. If I missed any interaction that you find particularly useful and comes up at least somewhat often, uh, let me know in the comments down below. I'm also still learning, right? There's so much to learn, so much to discover with T-Elements. So uh, yeah, hey, let me know. I also need to improve. 
So uh, yeah, if you also want to learn something new, then take a look at the comments. Maybe someone else has posted something interesting there. Regardless, that's it for today. Smack that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed it and want to see more t elements and also other Yu-Gi-Oh content. Anyway, enough yap. Take care of yourselves and bye-bye my friends.